Hey guys, time to give the final touches to our application. Last time we added Bootstrap and made our application more presentable. Now let's add some more functionality to our task list. First, what about keeping track of how many tasks were already marked as done and how many are still not checked? To do that, let's go back to our controller.js and add a new variable called pending count that will represent the amount of tasks that still have to be marked as done. Let's assign 3 to it since our mock task array starts off with 3 tasks. Then let's make use of the watch method of the scope object. The watch method basically keeps an eye on any scope object or variable you pass as parameter and it executes some function when this object suffers any alteration. The first parameter will be the name of the object you want to keep an eye on, the second will be the callback function and the third is just a boolean indicate the type of comparison the watch method is supposed to make. Let's pass it as true so Angular will know the object must be compared by content and not by reference. Now for the function, we're going to make use of a new AngularJS object called $filter. The filter object allows you to use filters inside of the controller, so let's add it to our controller dependency array and then add it to this line. What we're doing here is Every time the test list array suffers an alteration, the watch method will update the value of the pending count variable with the length of the array that only contains the tasks that are not yet done. Now let's go back to our view and let's show that variable somewhere. First, we create a new span and then we add the expression to it. Check out the browser and you see it already works. But we can make it a little better. Let's go back to the view, delete the items left and replace it with the ng pluralize directive. The ng pluralize directive is very intuitive. It basically keeps an eye on a variable and print the suffix depending on the value of the variable. In this case, we print item left for one and items left for any other value. Go back to the browser and check it out. Okay, now what about adding a button that clear from the list all the tasks that were already marked as done? First, let's go to controllers.js and add a function that clears the task marked as done from the array. Let's call the function clear complete and let's make it using the filter object again. This time we're going to replace the value of the test list with the array returned by the filter object after we filter out all the tasks marked as done. This should do the job. Finally, we have to add the clear completed button to the view. Let's go back to index.html and add a button alongside the items left. Let's call it clear tasks and let's bind it to the clear completed function using the ng directive we used before. Finally, let's add some bootstrap classes to make it standard and let's add a name to it. We'll show the text clear completed and then the count of the tasks that will be removed, which is basically the sum of tasks minus the ones that are still pending. Finally, let's go for app.css and align the button on the right side of the screen. Now go back to the browser and check it out. It works. To make it just a bit more fancy, let's go back to the index.html and add a new directive to the button. The ng show directive will hide the element in case the expression provided to it as a parameter is not true. In this case, we're comparing to see if the pending count is smaller than the whole task list. In other words, the button will only show up in case there is something to remove using it. Now go back to the view and test it again. Great, right? Now let's try something different. What about adding some animation to the transitions of your template? To do that, we're going to need the Angular Animate module or ng animate. The Angular Animate module is not part of the AngularJS basic module, so we need to download the module and add it to our app. Let's take that chance to learn how to add new modules in Angular. I will show you two distinct ways to do that. The first option is to do it manually. You can go directly in angularjs.org page, click download, browse the extra modules and add it to your project folder. Then add a link to it on your index.html file and it's done. The other way and better way would be to import the module using Bower. Bower is a JavaScript package manager and it already comes bundled with the Angular Seed boilerplate, so you already have it in your project. Remember the files on the root of your project. 
There is one among them that is called Bower.json. Bower.json contains a list of all the external modules your application needs to include in the respective version. All you need to do is add the Angular Animate module there, in the same version of the AngularJS preferably, then open your command prompt or terminal, navigate to the application folder and do an npm install. This will include your module to the Bower components folder of your app. So now, to have it on your app, you need to add the script tag on the index.html. Ok, now the last thing you need to do is to include the ng-animate module as a dependence module of your application. Go back to your app.js file and add it. The ng-animate module will help you to deal with your CSS and JavaScript transitions by attaching special classes to some elements during its transition events. The ng-repeater element, for example, you gain special classes when new elements are in the process of being added and being removed from the array. Let's see it in action. First, let's add a new class to the ng-repeat elements, just so we can attach some CSS to it. We'll set all the CSS transitions on the elements to take one second. Now, if we go back to the browser, we'll notice that some special classes are added to the element for a second before the element disappear. Now let's go back to the CSS and make some use of this. Change the duration to 0.3 and then add this to your CSS. The ng-leave and ng-leave-active are two classes added to the element on the transition begin and end. By changing the height from 0 to 50 pixels, we got a delay chain animation. Now going back, by adding the opposite to the classes that are triggered on the enter event, we get an animation from element addition and from element removal. The same animation interval will be used for your color transition, so our highlighting is now also smoother. And that's it! That was our to-do list application. The code for it is available among the files of this course. In the next section, we're going to start a new application that will teach us about some new concepts of AngularJS, like partial views, routing, and much more. See you there!